let's get into some key details. Now, there's going to be lots of shout outs tonight, but the first shout out of the night is going to go to this wonderful person, a guy who I highly respect and I am more than thankful for. Okay. It is Chad G. All right. What does Chad have? Well, we're going to go ahead and full screen this. Some of you guys have already seen this on X. But I promise you, I would never just share something that's been shared and not elaborate a little bit more about it or try to find some more detailed information in regards to that. So, Chad G., if you happen to be watching tonight or on the chopped up version, we do appreciate you as far as our community. Let's go ahead and full screen this. What does Chad have to share? Well, it says Microsoft to invest United States two uh, two point nine billion in AI and cloud infrastructure in Japan while boasting boasting what? Now I get where people are coming from. You know, I've gotten criticism. Oh God, every time something's mentioned about Japan, you guys from the Jasmine community immediately think of that is Jasmine. I, I wouldn't do that. You know, this is where we have a difference of regulars and people who consistently watch the content, appreciate the content, and understand. No, we don't do that. I've never done that, right? Don't provide fluff. Let's give you guys some more about this here in just a moment. So as we go to the actual outline, okay, you will see that there's a link here, and we'll full screen this as well. And it goes on to mention specifically this, okay? AI, cloud infrastructure, Microsoft invest $2.9 billion in Japan while boosting the nation's skills, research, and again, this keyword, cyber security. Now, again, this says April 10th, but in reality, it was April 9th. And, you know, you got to keep in mind, it's not even the 10th where we're at, right? So this is the 9th technically, but, you know, that they're on the other side of the world, right? So, but for most of us in the Western Hemisphere and so on, it's, uh, it's still the 9th. If you're in Europe, maybe it's not the 9th anymore, right? So... Some key people here, right? You recognize some of these guys, whether you want to agree with the politics or not. Let's not get into that. But one thing I want to point out is this whole statement of, for example, you know, where it mentions hyperscale cloud computing, AI infrastructure in Japan to expand digital skilling programs, excuse me, digital, with goal of providing AI skilling to more than 3 million people over the next three years, open its first Microsoft Research Asia lab in Japan and deepen its cybersecurity collaboration with government in Japan. Now, I want to state this. I understand this is spelled deep in, but I'm just going to give you guys a clue. Um, on the second segment, because we have more than one, okay? On the second segment for Jasmine, after we take our break, uh, you want to pay attention to Jankshin and Deepin. Now, I understand Deepin is spelled D-E-P-I-N, but I just want to point that out as well. All right, check this out. This is good stuff. When I got more into this whole thing about cybersecurity collaboration with the government of Japan, I was thinking to myself, I remember talking about some of this stuff, especially with the roundtable. Shout out to, you know, our brother Jesse, KIR Finance, and, of course, Rob Mass over at uh, Crypto Future 99 you guys should be following those guys if you haven't done so already, right? They provide great content, great community people, but actual great research, right? So you see here that these investments aim to support Japan's key pillar to tackle deflation. Um, as you guys know, with all the recent reports that we've had in regards to inflation, um, again, this is just Japan with another great example of uh, specifically why they're leading the charge. And let's face it, while we're not here in the United States, as we get more into this, you're going to see other key things being mentioned. And I'm just going to jump right into that. So number one is this, the leadership statements. Obviously, Fumio Kishida, Prime Minister of Japan, goes on to mention some of these things. Um, this quote here I like, as economic activities in the digital space increase, it's important to uh, or I should say, it is important for the Japanese industry as a whole to work with global companies like Microsoft that are equipped with a set of digital infrastructure. We appreciate Microsoft announce, announcement excuse me, of the new investment in Japan. Microsoft has made significant contributions to the social implementation of the generative AI in Japan through various initiatives and so on. 
Another key word for you, if you're the type of guy taking notes for whatever reason, social, okay? I want to pound that home so much, social, okay? Because when you understand why we mentioned some of these keywords, then you'll have your aha moment. Because at the end of the day, what's the point of watching all this or listening to all this? If there's nothing really solid, then it is just fluff, right? So I'm going to go ahead and go to the next part of this. We see it again. We are honored to contribute to Japan. This is in regards to uh, the statement from Miki Susaka, president of Microsoft Japan. Probably not pronouncing that right. Apologize. So honored to contribute to Japan and its future with our largest investment to date, technology and knowledge, technology and knowledge. Think about that for a second. In collaboration with our partners, Microsoft Japan is fully committed to supporting the people and organizations of Japan to solve social problems and achieve more. And social problems. All the research we talked about in the past in regards to data harmonization um, and, you know, society 5.0 and just a whole slew of things, right? As we get more into this outline, I'll full screen this part, and I'm not going to read everything verbatim, but it's worth pointing out the key areas. Tokyo Metropolitan Government, Microsoft, entered into a partnership last year, if you weren't aware of it, and have been empowering Japan's workforce with what? Digital skills. Today's announcement by Microsoft, which includes programs to encourage women and embrace AI and provide AI skilling to the 3 million people, is again a significant step for Japan to lead the age of digitalization. So there's no matter of if it's going to do it, they are doing it. And like we point out before, especially when it comes to crypto, which particular cryptocurrency see, do, you, do you see like really doing well at the beginning of the bull run? Jasmine has definitely led that charge. But we have talked about the whole thing of, you know, uh, contributing to the local society in Japan. And, you know, the concept of the personal data locker and um, date, you know, like for what we talked about, for example, um, a point system. And, you know, how much will you earn by monetizing your data? How much, how much are you actually contributing to the local society? And I did mention some of these key things about maybe it was bullet trains or public transportation. Here's another example of that. So Tokyo Metropolitan Government pioneered the use of generative AI to make their offices more efficient, improve the quality and services provided to their citizens. They will continue to embrace cutting edge technology and lead Japan's digital transformation. Talks about UNITAR, Microsoft, strive to do what? Democratize access to AI education. I want to take a pause on that for a second. In the past, I've done deep dives in regards to Kazuma Sasato, and we talked about, for example, um, specific programs for education, and we've done deep dives about that. Is this another example? Well, or is that just a big, you know, as the saying goes, uh, coincidence? I don't necessarily think it is, but it's always worth pointing out, and of course, um, you can go back into some of those sections. I don't know if it's necessary on this channel, but you're more than welcome to look more into that. And I will elaborate a little bit more about um, education, AI governance, and specifically um, the whole concept of, for example, integrity when it comes to AI and why it's so important. And reference for you guys on a future outline, I'm not done with it. Um, a few countries, they're putting a lot of emphasis in regards to it. It's not just Japan. We got, you know, South Korea. We got Taiwan. But there's various other countries that are putting a lot of emphasis on the integrity of not having biasness when it comes to data. And again, back to the whole thing of Elon Musk, when he was talking about some of that stuff of, you know, he wants X to be the platform you know, the, the all-in-one everything app, but specifically recognizing free speech and non-bias AI. I mean, it's call it what you want. That's a thing. I'll get more into that on another particular day. Look out for that. Now, I want to jump over to this and shout out to Neo X Tricks, okay? Because what's important here is I just mentioned the whole thing in education. I'm not, again, we're going to elaborate so much on this, but Shout out to our brother, Neo. Let's full screen this as well. He posted this, I believe, earlier today, um, or actually yesterday, I should say. 
And, you know, he states he has a document that relates to what kind of meeting Kazuma Sato attended as a representative of Jasmine in Japan. It's a good read. I do agree. It is a good read. The key takeaway from this, because I don't want to read the whole thing, is where you see back a couple years ago that you have this whole thing of research projects completed in the regards to the whole thing of the impactful changes of geopolitical risks. And again, here's now your key words, geopolitical risks on Japan's industrial structure and science and technology commissioned by Watanabe Memorial Foundation for the promotion of new technology. You got to keep in mind, Kazuma Sato had that thing going on. And he spoke about this a couple years ago about education in the metaverse. Here is your key aha moment. It goes on to mention that they did this whole thing in regards to research on the metaverse that contributes to solving social issues. Okay. Interesting. Look at this part. Research grant. Research on applied technologies in regional revitalization members to measure, excuse me, to realize a decar decarbonized society. Okay. So this was two years ago. But again, all these terms popping up about social issues, metaverse, new technology, all of these key things worth pointing out. And especially when you see that August of apparently 2021, there was a commission by the cabinet office to review the FY 2020 roadmap uh, in regards to comprehensive research of why this is all significant in regards to uh, these new technologies and so on. So why mention this? Well, again, fast forward to some of the things that were also referenced. So I'm going to jump back to this whole thing of Microsoft. And as we get to this, you will see some of the citations. Okay. So what I want to do is when you go here to news.microsoft.com APAC 2024, it will give you some of these key links uh, towards the bottom and so on, right? And, you know, some of the citations, especially about Unitar um, and, and some of these other things, okay? And when I got into this, I said to myself, this is really, really interesting to say the least. Why is that? Well, jumping over, one of the links that they send you to is this. And it's in regards to specifically Japan's security policy now as we get more into the outline i will give you guys a fast forward clip to the part where jesse of kir finance was talking about for instance you know with like something like the japanese military use like a pdl and his reasons for that all right so we're gonna tie in all of this stuff i know it's it's very bold to say some of these things i know i don't have confirmation I could connect the dots enough to give you a, an understanding of some of this stuff and also dates. All right. We're going to also point some of these things out. Okay. You have to stick around for all the presented material. Otherwise you're going to miss it. So let's go ahead and full screen this as well. And what you'll see here is a little bit about this whole post from mofa.go.jp. So, in the citations from that Microsoft link, when you go into it, it talks about some of these things, right? About national security strategy, the NSS. And when I jumped into this, I saw this statement from December 2nd, or excuse me, December 16th, 2022, about the national security strategy PDF and other strategy documents, basic policies on national security and how they were decided by the NSC and approved by the cabinet. So, again, I'm going to take you over to that and check this out for a second. This is very, very interesting in my opinion. As we get into this, oh, hopefully I can zoom in a little bit more. As we get into this, yes, you will see that you have a statement from the National Security Strategy of Japan, again, December 2022. And the reason I want to point this out is this is how we tie some of these things uh, that we mentioned. This right here, National Security Strategy of Japan, okay? Let's jump down to a second as we get into it. It says, 
Japan will consider reviewing government procurement procedures, including those by local municipalities, as well as expanding the, co the scope excuse me, of the prior screening with regard to critical infrastructure field in regards to you know, a thing called Promotion Act. And look at this part. With regard to data and information protection, Japan will carry out additional measures to ensure more appropriate management of sensitive data and safety and reliability of information and communication technology services. Very interesting. In addition, keeping in mind information security practices of leading countries and needs of the industries, examinations that would be bolstered to Japan's information security, including security clearance. So I want to share this other thing with you guys as well. And this is another one that's kind of cited from a, a site just like this. Let's take you over to this as well. And it's regards to Japan's legislation for peace and security, the development of security legislation. Again, security legislation. Now, when we saw our biggest moments when it comes to Jasmine, was always due in reference of an action or something that happened. The first big one where we left the 0 0.0056 area for Jasmine and took it to over a penny is when we saw uh, the announcement of what? You know, bills becoming acts. As we know, acts are, are laws. For me, there's too much that is here that cannot be dismissed. If people from whatever communities want to dismiss it, hey, that's on them. Again, I just present material. Take it as you will. Let's full screen this as well. Let me know what you think in the comments. I thought this was really something else. So development of, what does it say? Seamless security legislation to ensure Japan's survival and protect its people. Back all the way to like, for example, 2014, and then really getting the ball rolling in 2015, especially when it comes to, you know, the late, great Shinzo Abe's proposal in regards to jumpstarting Japan and having the United States, you know, join forces and in investing in startups with VC funding and so on, right? Long before the talk of Web3. When I got into this, I decided to look into a little bit more about the development of security legislation and the outline of Japan's legislation for quote unquote peace and security. At that particular legislation session, they had us talk about seamless responses to any situations to secure the lives and peaceful livelihood of the Japanese people and for Japan to contribute to the peace and stability of the international community. Now, I understand these are bold statements, but if you go over to, and here's this citation, cas.go.jp, you will find this. And it's, of course, a provisional translation. But what's really interesting is when you get into some of the nitty gritty about this, and here it is. Let's go ahead and make sure all the settings are good. They are. And it talks about, specifically, the cabinet's decision on development of seamless security. And I thought it was interesting to see how many things were mentioned here. And I don't want to get into a big old history topic, but... You know, during the 67 years since the Constitution of Japan came into effect, the security environment around Japan has fundamentally transformed and is continuing to evolve. And Japan is confronted by complex and significant national security challenges. They are. Getting more into this, I'm going to jump down to this part. They talk about the direct influence on security for Japan. They talk about a lot of this stuff in regards to risks, right? But... They talk about maintaining the peace and security of Japan, ensuring its survival as, a well, as well as securing its people's lives and how it's the primary responsibility for the government. As we got more into the whole thing of this topic, you even see, for example, the, you know, the whole thing with the United States mentioned. Important to appropriately develop and maintain cooperative 
um, measures, right? Operate Japan's own defense capability, strengthen mutual cooperation with the U.S. While there's tons of things getting into here, what's also incredibly interesting is when we get down to this part about a legal basis for security. And look at what it says. In accordance with the basic orientation presented by Prime Minister well, Shinzo Abe, at the May 15th press conference, which took place after the report of advisory panel on a reconstruction of legal basis for security, there was a submission on that same date, discussions about the ruling parties and examination of this thing that was conducted by the Japanese government. Look at this part. It talks about the discussions of the ruling coalition, how the government will promptly develop domestic legislation necessary for securing the lives and peaceful livelihood of its people. And of course, with basic policies that does address self-defense and you know their policies on how they would go about things and so on. I don't want to get into all of that specifically, but it's there. And it was profound to see how everything has snowballed from 2015. One more thing to share in regards to Japan's security policy. And again, very interesting that this came from a link from that Microsoft article. Okay. So you got a thing about the bilateral and multilateral security cooperation. Talks about um, some of these things. The East Asia Summit. I covered that in the past. I think some members of our community talked about this. But this whole thing about Japan making efforts to realize a regional security environment desirable for Japan by strengthening the U.S.-Japan alliance, combining bilateral and multilateral security cooperation at multiple levels. All right. Let's take you to why all of this is important and why I'm mentioning it. And I'm now fast forward to this key part. Shout out to Jesse. There was a little bit of uh, Rob in this round table. You guys might have seen it, but it's still good to reference this. After we reference it, I'm going to take it to another key thing that was in regards to 2023. And it's interesting to tie it all in together, to say the least. Um, and then after that, we'll pause and we'll get into the comments. And the last part will be another thing that, in my opinion, is an absolute bombshell in regards to Toyota, KDDI, and all of it. Smash that like if you appreciate the coverage. Let's have you take a look at this. I really do think it's something else. Here we go. Please make sure you're following Jesse, KIR Finance, and, of course, Rob Mass of Crypto Future 99. Let's go ahead and full screen this. Here we go. Something else to kind of tap into the, a couple things I wrote down while you guys were talking there. Um, the the post from Jasmine US that you shared, Rob, about the military. Uh, think about all the all the touch points with IoT in the military, right? Is the military interested in IoT? Absolutely. Uh, depending on whatever wearables, uh, you know, a soldier is wearing, depending on what's going on in the military base, depending on what's going on in the military vehicle, uh, there could be a million different IoT touch points in the military. That's just one example of it. You know, another example of it that we've talked about, uh, I think, before is, you know, look at all the military secrets and whatnot that are just spilled on the Internet on Discord because someone's trying to impress their friends. <laughs> right. Uh, you know, I mean, some of this stuff could be locked up uh, in the PDL. So so the military angle, ironically enough, Hara, I want to say brought that up, I think in AMA, maybe over sometime over the last year, a military angle to this. And, you know, when, when this post here is talking about the U.S., uh, but could that tie into something with Japan? You got to realize that Japan is an ally. So, yes, it could, right? You, you think about um, the different countries that are involved in, in NATO, for example. Do they share technology between the companies? Yeah, or between the countries. Yes, they do, right? So all of that does actually happen with, with allies. So there could be a lot more there. Now, I wanted to say also, kind of going back to um, the talk about uh, PlayStation, right, and, and the GPUs. So uh, 
I had actually looked into this recently because the Junction website is out there. It's it's like semi-functional, like the tabs up top don't work and don't go anywhere. But the but the information that's on the actual site is is valid. And one of the images on the site, like if you scroll down, there's an image of the GPU uh, specs, and it talks about right there. You just passed it. Go up a little bit, up, down a little bit, right there. So I looked at these specific uh, GPUs that were listed because I was curious because somebody had posted a question on X and they said, um, can I use my PlayStation 2 for this? Like, I have an old PlayStation. It's just sort of collecting dust. Could I plug it in and contribute? And so the interesting part was when I looked into these various GPUs, uh, none of them directly showed up in PlayStation, okay? So there might be more GPUs. Obviously, there's some additional slots here that are kind of like grayed out currently that may be coming online. Um, but what, what I found very interesting was the reference to the Apple M2 Max. Okay, so the Apple M2 Max is in the Apple Studio. And the, the irony here is that um, I actually have an Apple Studio. Uh, and so, so theoretically, I could be contributing to the Jasmine network with my unused computer power. And wh where I find this really fascinating, where you take this one step further, is you say, okay, uh, so, so what does that mean, Jesse? Who cares, right? Well, who cares is that um, Andosan and his time at Sony directly heavily influenced Apple, okay? And now here we are kind of coming full circle back to potentially using an Apple product that ties back into Jasmine. And you kind of, it kind of makes you think a little bit under the surface that I don't know what Apple's relationship is specifically in Japan right now, but it makes me think that there might be something happening there. And I don't know what it is. Nothing's been announced, but it's right here on the Jankson website. So think about that. <laughs> well, just to chime in on that really quick, I covered last week <clears throat> that, yeah, that Apple's uh, newest line of uh, laptops actually had a uh, data leakage problem, right? I don't know if you guys saw that or not. And I was like, well, well, Jesus, who uh, who solves this problem? Right. <laughs> like, is you know, there, it, yeah. Go ahead. I was gonna say, like, like, what do you guys think? Is there is I see massive potential there? Like I was sitting there saying, listen, when this came out, tell me from a business standpoint, if I if I am somebody over at Jasmine that matters, right? And I see, I mean, obviously they're gonna be in the know about these kind of things happening in the tech world, right? They're gonna be paying attention, they got their finger on the pulse, right? So if I'm seeing this happening and I am somebody that matters over at Jasmine, for example, I'm definitely put picking up the phone and and putting feelers out there to say, hey, you know, you know that leakage problem that you got with your data? Guess what? You know. All right. So yes, the whole thing about the leakage problem that you have. Now, at the very beginning of this outline. OK, notice that we mentioned Microsoft's announcement April 9th. OK, here's maybe one of your aha moments. Take it whatever way you want. But we did mention that when we get into this next part, Hara mentioned this. And I also want to give a shout out to uh, little Bidman as well. So Hara goes on to mention, um, I believe, earlier today. Right. Today's still the ninth, technically speaking. He says, we are always looking for talented people. He thinks the same for all web companies. Young engineers need to place or find a place to develop their skills and get results in popular projects. They're always looking for talented people. And they hope that you will achieve results through your projects and further brighten your career. To take it to the extreme, if you haven't built a career that appeals to you, Working on a well-known project involved. Don't chat too much. Show and facilitate. He cites Shanction and, of course, Jasmine. But a little bit, uh, Bidman, he posted this. It says, Jasmine Co. Recruitment. And, you know, again, this is, um, you know, going straight to, I guess you could say, like, their hiring page. 
recruitment for information of blockchain product development, data marketplace mechanism, all that good stuff. But look what it also shows. Building a platform that uses the latest technology that combines blockchain tech, right? And also IoT, AI, they ask for the development of new functions, products for the platform. Here's some of the tasks you need to do, perform the functions of the following, foundation development, middleware development, application development, because we are doing what? Developing in cooperation. There's another key point word for you with external partner companies we will leave you with your areas of expertise and interest check this out talks about the integration of all this the boundaries the industries unparalleled ideas jasmine aims to restore sovereignty of data to the original owner individual data safely securely and generates a secure drive dedicated to business managed by the blockchain in the PC to protect the data. But again, this whole thing about partner companies, external partner companies. And then you jump back to, just in case you missed it, this announcement. Remember how we it mentioned specifically skills? Cybersecurity? The announcement on also the 9th? Boom, the ninth. Hara's announcement on the ninth. I mean, you know, some people say it's a coincidence. I don't know. You know, may have some research. I don't know. All right, that's a little inside joke. But anyway, um, it, it's it's very, very interesting to say the least. And can we give you an example in regards to big companies or external companies? Uh, what's another reference? Do you guys remember this announcement? Maybe you do if you've been following Jasmine for a while. This announcement from a while back stating from August, and I remember covering this, former Sony execs laying down data security gambit to who? Big to tech giants. I mean, come on. Microsoft is a huge tech giant. Panasonic's a huge tech giant. Interesting. Did we forget about this? Are you new to Jasmine? And if you are, let's welcome you. Look at this. Kazumasa Sato. Assigned to Sony course information tech section as a fresh economics graduate in 1980, right? He has a background, the whole thing of using IBM's mainframe. But you have to appreciate some of these guys. They're like the pioneers, you know? When you go further down into it, the establishment of Jasmine in 2016, um, coming out of the whole thing of 2015 from a direct reaction of what we talked about in regards to you know, Shinzo Abe's initiative, okay, and getting more into this. This is good stuff. I actually will come back out of the frame. Sorry. Look what it says. Last summer, there could be a network that is what? More secure and safe. Sato, the 66-year-old, you know, he's 66 then. He's probably 67 now. Uh, president of the Venture said in an interview, we are from Sony. So you love to take a shot at doing things that other people can't do. I mean, that's bullish as all hell. The ambition resulted in a service called Personal Data Logger. Right, we know about that. But unlike conventional centralized data management system in which personal data is stored in a particular server, the service employs the blockchain to store data in a decentralized way without depending on dedicated physical servers. Prevents falsification. And what does that also say? Loss of data. Back to what Rob was talking about. I know he, Rob is doing a live show as we speak. It's all good, right? But Rob talked about the leakage of data. Did he not? Look at this. Encoded digital ledgers, excuse me, ledgers stored across the network, computers, does not allow data to be modified, deleted by a single actor. Helps users identify and trace unintended use of their data by a third party as it is inherently trackable on the ledger. Got citations about WITS, NIP and Travel, Nagoya. So a lot of things to be mentioned here. And, you know, I think it's extremely important to point out some of these key things. Because, you know, when you get down to this part about the interest in generative AI, ChatGPT and how it's all booming. 
He says that there's a risk that if one enters sensitive information, it could be absorbed into the system and lead into unintended data leak. Again, this is all cited from last summer. Boy, is it valid today, is it not? Combination of Jasmine's data, security technology, AI could create a kind of AI optimized for personal use without worrying about data security. And such AI could be installed into various devices, such as cars, smart speakers, other things. I'll get more into the whole thing about Jankshin here in a bit, but I'm going to go ahead and play this for you guys. And then after this, uh, we'll get into the comments and bring you the information in regards to the second part of this quote unquote bombshell. It has to do with Genki Oda. Okay. But if anything, let's go ahead and play this. This is about five minutes and 39 seconds. Smash that like if you haven't done so already. Um, Mark Reddick. Thank you. I think I've seen you on the show before in the comments. So thank you for this. Just providing you, you know, the community, a very well done video. All right, let's go to play this. Here we go. Feature, former Sony XX lay down data security gambit to tech giants. Kyoto News by Yuki Yamaguchi, Kyoto News, August 9th, 2023, 1535. All, feature, Japan. When Kazumasa Sato was assigned to Sony Corpy's Information Technology section as a fresh economics graduate in 1980, he was baffled. Maintaining an information system using IBM mainframe computers was not precisely what he had envisioned doing at one of the country's most famous tech companies, known for innovative products such as the iconic Walkman cassette player and Trinitron TV. But about 40 years later, Sato says that experience set the course for his career. His fascination with networks eventually led him to set up a data security venture utilizing blockchain technology with other former Sony innovators, including former President Kunitake Ando. Jasmine Inc. President Kazumasa Sato, C. Executive Officer Hidehiko Kakanuma, L. And Head of Software Development Takashi Hagiwara pose for a photo in the company's office in Tokyo on July 3, 2023. Kyoto. Jasmine Inc., established in 2016, aims to create a world where people can have control over their personal data at a time when big tech firms such as Google LLC and Apple Inc. have obtained an unfathomable amount of personal information from customers across the globe. There could be a network that is more secure and safe, Sato, the 66-year-old president of the venture, said in an interview. We are from Sony, so we love to take a shot at doing things that other people can't do. The ambition resulted in a service called Personal Data Locker, a platform where people can safely manage their data and decide how much they want to disclose to businesses or services they wish to use. Unlike the conventional, centralized data management system in which personal data is stored in a particular server, the service employs the blockchain to store data in a decentralized way, without depending on dedicated physical servers. This prevents falsification and loss of data as the blockchain, an encoded digital ledger stored across a network of computers, does not allow data to be modified or deleted by a single actor. It also helps users identify and trace unintended use of their data by a third party, as it is inherently trackable on the ledger, the company said. The service has already been adopted by Nippon Travel Agency Company, which uses it to manage customer information. Wits Corp a Nagoya-based company that helps manage logistics at large events, also uses it to handle personal information, such as infections due to the coronavirus. Jasmine said it is looking to expand its customer base further. The venture has also created its own cryptocurrency, Jasmine Coin, with an eye to using it in the future as a reward for those who share their information. The virtual currency, which was first listed in Japan in 2021 and now held by more than 50,000 people, has a market capitalization of about $200 million as of the end of July. Ever since being initially shocked by the emerging concept of the internet in the early years of his career, Sato always had a passion for network-related businesses, he said. The internet was a concept that had been non-existent before, said Sato, who later helped launch internet service provider businesses at Sony and served as president of Sony's e-commerce unit. It threw common sense out the window. It was extremely attractive. Jasmine Inc. President Kazumasa Sato speaks during an interview at the company's office in Tokyo on July 3, 2023. Kyoto. He left Sony in 2010 to pursue other opportunities, but as he saw the need for a safe internet rise on the back of increasing misinformation, online abuse, and concerns over the use of personal data, he decided to launch a venture to help create a network everyone can use more safely. Sato's idea attracted like-minded risk-takers from Sony. Takashi Hagiwara, a longtime engineer in charge of the development of the VIO PC, 
quit the tech giant in 2020 with less than one year left before reaching the company's retirement age to join Jasmine. There is a sort of joy that is similar to solving a puzzle when we try to bring our ideas into reality, said Hagiwara, who oversees software development at the venture. That's what I felt at Sony, and what I continue to feel here, too. Hidehiko Kakanuma, who has a wealth of experience launching new businesses, including Sony Bank Inc., now serves as executive officer in charge of marketing at Jasmine. The emergence of blockchain technology is a really important factor, the 56-year-old executive said. With that, we can create a system that gives back to users when dealing with personal data. With various options under consideration, Sato says his ultimate goal is to combine its technology with artificial intelligence. While interest in generative AI, such as ChatGPT, is booming, he said there is always a risk that if one enters sensitive information, it can be absorbed into the system and lead to an unintended data leak. Supplied photo shows the login screen of Jasmine Inc.'s data security service Personal Data Locker. Photo courtesy of Jasmine Inc., Kyoto. The combination of Jasmine's data security technology and AI could create a kind of AI optimized for personal use without worrying about data security. Such an AI could be installed into various devices, such as cars and smart speakers, among other things, he added. If people feel threatened by exposing their personal data, they become reluctant to utilize data, he said. But if we are able to manage our data on our own, it will surely make the world more fun and convenient. Sato compared his company's service to making real-life decisions, such as how much personal information you wish to disclose when meeting new people or if you offer your name card when greeting someone in a business setting. This is what everybody does in real life, Sato said. You don't necessarily have to lie, but you don't really have to expose everything, either. Some of you guys ask what cold storage solution I use. I use this, and it is the Decent Wallet, all right? I also, of course, have a ledger uh, like this, all right? You can get a discount, basically, from going into the affiliate link, which is in all the live video descriptions and recorded and so on. And for the Yahoo's that are out there, they're like, this is just a shield. And, you know, we'll fix point this out. And it's a great point. Were you aware that you don't necessarily get a discount link just going straight to the site? No, you actually have to go through a platform like this. So how cool is that? You know, I don't think anybody's complaining about that. But anyway, use the link, get a discount. There's another one here. If you're the type of person you want to get one for your, you and your, you know, significant other, uh, you can get two of them. They have a, they actually have another promotion, which is this. And I think this is cool. You can get an all-in-one card wallet plus backup card package. Interesting. I thought that was cool. And again, one of the main key things I like about the Decent Wallet is not having to do the, the red tape of, you know, jumping through all the hoops for XDC and the custom folder. I mean, Edward Vincent can vouch on that. Some of you guys can too as well in regards to Ledger. That was a pain in the butt. You don't have that problem. You literally open up your phone it's on your app track everything that's going on right and you know singles not your keys not your crypto you know the drill check it all out though if you wish to do so it is truly the cold storage solution that i use for the most part there's still some on ledger that you know i kind of split it up on it and so on so it is what it is but if i have preference over one i'm going with this one a lot easier to use and so on and some people even to this day still ask me which one to use. Thank <laughs> you.